coach kind of looking back at the Louisville game, what stood out to you about the defense and performance? Well, I thought, you know, when the game was on the line, you know, I thought our guys stepped up and, and really made some big big plays down the stretch, which was, uh, which was a positive. You know, we've had two really tight games, or three down the stretch, and, uh, you know, in three, two of the three of those games, we've made plays on defense uh, that gave us a chance to be successful. Um, now on the flip side, you know, the things that we've talked about collectively, um, you know, we, uh, we were really efficient on third down. That was, that was good for us, um, you know, but on the flip side, we gave up two explosive third downs. And so overall, there were five explosives in the game. Um, and that was what really, you know, when you go back and you watch that game, um, you know, those are the things in that game and the, and the TCU game really in particular. Uh, but really the last three games that have stood out, just, um, you know, eye discipline, responsibilities, uh, some of those things that we got to get better at. And it's not one, one position group. Uh, you know, we got to get better corner and safety wise, just playing a clean game consistently. And, you know, we got to do a better job fitting the run up. We let one pop. Uh, that was an explosive there. In the second half, they got one of those touchdown drives going. So, uh, you know, I thought we, we did a good job on third down, but we gave up the, the explosive plays, which allowed them to be in the game. Um, you know, I think that was a really good offense, uh, probably the best offense uh, we've seen collectively. Um, and so, you know, to be able to minimize them uh, was big. Uh, but our guys also, you know, aren't satisfied and feel like we've got, feel like we've got, you know, uh, a whole nother level that that we could perform at. And so, um, you know, excited for the challenge uh, of this upcoming week. Stanford's a really good football team, extremely well coached, have a really dynamic quarterback, um, have one of the, if not the best receiver uh, in this league. Um, so, you know, we'll have to, we'll have to play better moving forward. Um, you know, on this next three game stretch and, and it starts, you know, going on the road with, uh, you know, two more back to back road, road games. And, yeah, no, it's maybe not what you want from the defense, but the fact that you grew up against like a NFL caliber wide receiver and it takes, you know, that one big play for him to really make a mark on the game. What, is that a good sign for where you feel like you're, you're well, secondary guy? Well, I think, I think it's just consistency. Um, I think it's technique and fundamentals and I think it's, um, just you know, when you're playing really good teams uh, that have dynamic playmakers, um, you know you can't let a play off. You can't have a, a play with with bad eye discipline or uh, a play where you misfit a run um, and allow those explosives for them to to them to stay in the game. And that's an that's an offense that's built on explosive plays. Uh, that's an offense that you know the the ironic thing was for as many shots as we got in the game, uh, and there were a lot, and we we knew going in there were going to be a lot. Uh, we really didn't give up an explosive shot on a design shot play. It was just, um, you know, uh, uh, two third downs that were big plays. Um, you know, we, we did give up one early in the game on the on the uh, the sale route um, that we should have played better. That was a shot play, so to speak. But but it was more third down execution and then one one misfit on a run. So, um, you know, I think when you watch the game collectively, I went back last night and I watched it. Uh, without the explosive plays, and if you watch it without those five plays, you realize that we played pretty good. We just got to be consistent throughout the game, and and that's and that's part of us growing, and that's where you know right now we're at, and we we've, we've got to uh, uh, strain to get better, and just just one play focus over and over again. And we've shown we, you know, we did it in the BYU game. We, we got a bunch of shots early in that game, and um, you know, really limited explosives against a good offense that week. So it's not like we haven't done it. Um, but, you know, that's the challenge from a consistency standpoint moving forward. And I think we've got the guys uh, to do it and to execute at the level uh, that we're challenging them to. So we uh, just got to just step up and continue to, to press to get better as a unit. Before the Louisville game, the strength of this defense seemed to be <coughs> forcing turnovers. But this past week, you know, the defense found other ways to cut, drive short, sort of bend, don't break. What did you see from your defense with that mentality? Well, I think it shows a lot about, you know, I think people can, obviously the, the hype for the turnovers, rightly so. I mean, you know, it's been awesome to see what our guys have done uh, in buying into that. But, um, you know, you, you can't live and die on that. There, there's gonna be games where um, quarterbacks do a great job of taking care of the ball, um, you know, et cetera. We just wanna capitalize on the opportunities that present themselves and, and try to go make our opportunities when we can. 
Uh, I thought the, the third the third and one, fourth and one sequence of plays uh, was huge there in the game. I thought that was, you know, I thought that really, you know, at that point in the game, all the momentum was going their way. We had an 11-point lead coming out of half. Uh, we squandered it in the third quarter. They're going in to take the lead. They haven't had to lead the whole game at home with, what, eight minutes left around. And you get a third and one, and you, and you bow up and stop them. And then that was kind of the, you know, felt like, hey, you know, we're the, we're, we're, we're the ACC uh, runner up, we're gonna run it again on you kind of moment. And our guys bowed up and, and you know, showed them who, who was boss at that point in the game. And so I felt like that two play sequencing was huge for us. Um, consequently, you know, I think we were in a good call on the last fourth and one. Uh, there was a debate on between Coach Crum and I, is he gonna run it, is he gonna throw it? Uh, we both really felt like he was going to throw it. But then at the end of the day, I was like, man, we could end the game right here. Let's load the box. And if he throws it, let's cover him. And we covered everybody but one. And um, that, you know, obviously they got a big play in the drive, kept going. And then, you know, luckily the, uh, the, timely, the timely sack um, by Corey down there was a huge play in the game because that changed the, the whole dynamic when it's, you know, second and – whatever it was, 18, 19 now in the high red, um, it's a whole lot easier to call the next three plays. So, um, yeah, I thought uh, we bowled up, you know, and, it was, and what was frustrating was there was, there were multiple drives that we got them to, you know, in a good call, in a good chance to stop them, made a fourth and goal down there. Um, now the fourth and goal call, I, I wish I, we had that one back. I wish we'd uh, gotten in our goal line package. We screwed up, I screwed up the personnel, so we weren't even in the right package. Kind of what happened was we got into goal line, they weren't in go goal line offense. Oh crap, coach took a timeout. Then they sent out goal line, and then two receivers ran back off the field. So it was it was kind of a uh, mismanagement on, on my part, uh, for sure. So, you know, I think there was uh, – but it was good to see us hold them, get them to that fourth and goal. You know, now we just got to capitalize, and that's that's another – you know, you stop them right there, and now uh, instead of an 11-point lead, you're looking at an 18-point lead at halftime. I think you can call the game offensively and defensively different at that point. Um, so there were a lot of positives. I mean, it's not easy to go on the road and win against a top 25 team in a tough environment. And, you know, this group of guys is really resilient. They don't uh, – we're not afraid of anybody in the country. There's nobody that we feel like we can't play with. Uh, and, and I firmly believe that. Um, but do we have to get better at some things? Absolutely. But I do think it starts with, you know, the day one fundamentals of, um, you know, eye discipline, our drops and coverage being consistent and then tackling in space. Like those things haven't changed and we got to get better in those areas collectively moving forward. And that's kind of what the focus was this week. You know, um, Monday, we, we actually spent, you know, pretty much our whole practice, our whole walk through Monday, doing one big self-scout walkthrough of, you know, plays that have been successful against us because offenses are copycats and, you know, trying to make sure, okay, yes, we covered this correction six weeks ago against Nevada, but let's show it to you again because, you know, just to try to teach our guys and I think, you know, our staff trying to grow our guys in the knowledge of not only our defense but how the offenses try to attack us. Yeah, I think we're really talented. Uh, I think they are. I think at the beginning of the season, you know, they hadn't really gelled yet with um, a lot of new faces and just. And when I say gelled, it's not that they weren't playing, um, you know, playing hard or playing tough or physical or fundamentally. It's not, none of that. More just the chemistry piece. And I think that was kind of collectively, all of us as a defense. But that was the that was the biggest position that there were a lot of new guys, right? And so I think. What you saw, uh, what you've seen over the course of six weeks is, you know, now it's not a collection of new faces, but it's a group of guys that really believe in each other. And I think that takes time, and that takes going through adversity. I think that Nevada game was huge for us to go on a road to a team you, we were heavily favored in and to almost lose but find a way to win. Um, and then I think when you go through adversity like a loss, like the BYU loss, and then you've got a bye week, which is not fun to come off of a loss and have a bye week. Uh, and to go through that, I think that tested those guys. And so I think now you see us kind of coming out on the other side where our guys are, are pretty close knit and, you know, really believe in each other, uh, which is which is huge. You're not going to be successful unless you really, you know, believe and are confident in each other.
when you're having kind of your bi week conversations about the state of the program, where you guys see the future, are those conversations different when you're coming off a loss like after BYU versus when you're coming off of, you know, free enough stretch like you are right now? No, I mean, I think, um, well, I mean, I think, you know, we, we're obviously playing at a really high level offensively, you know, now over the last three weeks compared to where we're at, you know, from my perspective. But I think, no, I think, you know, you can't ever be too high or too low uh, in this. You've got to be able to, um, you know, so to speak, act medium. You know, if you've been there, then you need to act like you've been there. And uh, one loss doesn't define the team either. So, um, you know, I think you got to make the, make the uh, corrections and the adjustments necessary to make sure it doesn't happen moving forward. But, um, you know, football season is a long season. And like we said, this has only given us an opportunity for the next game to matter, you know, and uh, nothing but Stanford matters at this point in the year for us. And so that's the focus. But no, I think, you know, you're, you're always assessing where you're at, but I, I don't think that one game uh, defines a, a football team or a defense or an offense. Louisville played Notre Dame before you guys took on Louisville. And of course, Stanford has Notre Dame this week before you guys play them. Does that sort of have any impact on how you prepare? You see how both of those offenses prepare for one defense and then you kind of can see how they'll prepare for you? Yeah, I think um, Stanford does a great job. One, uh, they're a very game plan oriented offense. You'll see, um, you know, one play five times in the same game and it works, at, you know, the majority of the time that they run it. So I think their coaching staff does a great job of, um, you know, picking apart your weaknesses and, and, and building a game plan around around their players. Um, so yeah, I think it'll, you know, obviously this will be a good game for us to watch um, and just, uh, you know, get another view of another quality opponent that they're playing. And so, um, you know, we'll, we'll keep preparing as such. Yeah. Jahari Rogers announced that he'd be redshirting last week. Mm -hmm. um, can you just, what's your diagnosis of the quarterback room at this point? Does it uh, change anything of what you guys did against Louisville? No, it doesn't change anything. I mean, Jahari's a great kid. We want nothing but the best for him. Uh, he's been with us since we got here. I've seen him grow tremendously under Coach Hundley. Uh, I think he's a di completely different young man today from a maturity and growth standpoint than when he was, um, you know, two and a half years ago. Obviously, you know, we're, we're sad that, you know, he didn't decide to finish it out with us. But, uh, you know, I want we want nothing but the best for him moving forward. And um, the fact of the matter is those, those four guys that are playing the majority of the snaps are, you know, um, you know, guys that we really believe in right now. And um, so we feel, you know, I thought Deuce really stepped up and, and played a really clean game. And so I'm excited to see what he's going to do with the opportunity moving forward. Um, I think Crossley has played, um, you know, at a consistently uh, good level. I think, um, you know, uh, we just collectively, those three guys taking the majority of the snaps and then A.J. Davis or, you know, we're going to challenge him to keep growing. And, you know, there's not what you, what you have to look at in that room is, there's not a lot of guys that have started for us in that room. So now there's six games in. Um, and so I think that growth, you know, we hope we'll continue to see exponential growth in that room because, you know, it's one thing to be a talented guy like, like Jalen is, but like if you haven't started a lot of college football games, like that's a whole different level of expectation than coming in and being the, the first guy off the bench. And so, um, you know, I think, I think we, you know, we'll continue to grow in that room and get better and better each week. And, and, you know, I've got a lot of confidence in those guys, and I think that it's really easy um, on the outside looking in to say, uh, well, you know, this or that. But you got to remember that, like, if a guy is starting his sixth college game and he's going on the road against a top 25 team, that's, that's, that's a lot of pressure. And so, um, you know, I think we'll continue to get better, and I'm excited to see, you know, where we'll be at and, you know, let's play at a high level, uh, you know, in the cornerback room against Stanford. What have you seen from Deuce since he arrived and kind of his, how he's grown as his role has grown? With the team? Yeah, I thought from the spring to now has been uh, night and day. I think, um, you know, I, th I just think him being challenged to uh, uh, grow up, mature in some of those areas, uh, take accountability, and he's really responded and done that. And that's what's the most pleasing thing to look at, you know, where he was at in the spring to then where he was at in the fall was night and day. And then, you know, where he's at from the fall to, to how he's played in games has been, um, you know, something that, you know, gives us a lot of confidence. So, uh, and I think because of that, probably you'll see his confidence grow. Um, because as a player, there's, you know, I mean, you understand that what you, what you 
put on film is, is nothing but, you know, you're playing well on a high level. That's going to continue to grow his confidence exponentially. So, um, you know, excited for him. We're going need to him, need him to step up big down the stretch and, and play at a high level for us. Good. Thank you, Coach. Okay.